There's a way to do it and make it super relatable, man, where it's a conversation. You know, my boys at the office, they'd be like, you know, Nas, if anyone can get through to the kids, it's going to be you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and he was being real careful because I'm like, yeah, what you about to say, motherfucker? You about to say I'm, you about to say I'm ignorant, ain't you? Mm -hmm. He's like, you got a way at talking to people and getting all the information and therapizing them, but in this very casual like dialogue where you're just hanging out. It's you just hanging out with a kid and then all of a sudden they get therapy. I'm like, yeah. Watch out for the funny guy. Motherfucker will get you. You know. <laughs> that funny motherfucker will get you, boy. I tell you. Um, I get your guard down. We have a conversation. But I'm like, dude, when I'm in there, I am like grilling people with questions. Like it's mm -hmm. fucking Tommy gun questions. Yes. And there is not a lot of accuracy, too. It's straight up Tommy gun. You're just fucking spraying. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a letter, what letter would you be? Kids like what? <laughs> uh, uh, a Q seven, <laughs> seven uh, apostrophe. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and this is what's funny because he walks there in the museum. And he said, "Hey man, what's that right there?" The kid looks at it. He's it's two people having sex. <laughs> we'll go ahead and pause the podcast real quick. Here we go, Dad. Uh -oh. It's okay to talk about sex because we all have it. We all want it. <laughs> <laughs> we all have it, huh? <laughs> well, I ain't having it, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I want to. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I never like it. Hello, Bessie. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Put that tang down, man. Put it down. <laughs> You're feeling good today. <laughs> <laughs> so. How funny is that, right? He breaks the issues with this kid yeah. just by bringing up some humor, man. And next thing you know, now the kid's like willing to listen. Yeah. Like soon as I swear in the room, because you feel out the vibe real quick, but as soon as you swear, you just see them breathe, like their shoulders drop. And like, oh, they're like, oh, I can fuck with Nas. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. comes in there really tense. I promise you, dude, as soon as I swear, everyone's chill. Um, I'm like, okay, now we can do the real work. And so his way of going about teaching is magnificent. So now let's get to actual, the meat of what he said. This representation of, I thought he was going to say, like be, be in the moment. Like the past is the past. Don't be in the past. Don't be in the future. But he said, no, the past is literally the predictor is the explanation of the now. So they say, you always say you need to know your history. Why? Because history always repeats itself. So if you don't know your history, then you're lost in the current now. Mm -hmm. You're forever going to repeat the same mistakes. And so he's not, don't get it twisted now. He's not saying stay in the past. He's just saying you should know your history. Yeah. Because it will help you compute what's in front of you. That's why people come to therapy, Spence. Because they're missing some stuff and they're, they're not connecting the dots of what their past was, the intricacies, the traumas, the perfectionism, the middle child, the eldest child, right? The single parent, they adopted. Who knows? They, they ain't good. They're super bougie and privileged. There's so many different complexities that can fuck with a kid. And then they come to my office and I'm like, oh, there it is. And the kid's like, what? This Chicana said the other day, I was beginning of the semester, I said, man, my last therapist sucked. And I said, hey, why? Well, why? I didn't realize until I met you. <laughs> I said, what happened? She said, the way you psychoanalyzed me was the craziest shit. And I've been through a decent amount of therapy. I said, okay. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes I just throw some shit at the wall and then kind of see what happens when I'm psychoanalyzing and trying to break stuff down. But I'm usually pretty right. And if I'm not right, then I allow them to correct me. Um, okay, now another pivot, and then we'll get to the next scene. The way he does his teaching in this moment, not maybe the other moments, but in this moment, it's very much a cultural thing when it comes to black and brown therapist individuals. It's through stories. Mm -hmm. People love stories. Motherfuckers weren't able to read back in the day, or were forced not to read back in the day, not to get educated in old times, slavery times. 
And so you see this illiteracy that's been held against a lot of folks and stories were the way that we taught and the way our cultures were passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So when I tell folks like, Hey man, you're probably going to want maybe a therapist of color because they're going to be better at navigating you through these stories instead of someone being like, what's your goals? Yeah. Okay. Like the kid told me the other day, she was like, I, well, I need a goal so I can win. I said, well, it's all on a journey. I just need you to grow. I don't need, we ain't trying to win nothing. Motherfucker. You got chronic pain. I don't think we win in this. This shit ain't going nowhere, honey. So teaching through stories, through humor, maybe, uh, you know, maybe not make the sexual jokes if you're doing therapy, you know, probably not. Probably not. Uh, hey, you're getting fucked mentally. There you go. Jesus. It's like, what the fuck? The other day, I'm not going to repeat the full word, but you know me, sometimes I'll combine words uh, and all the time and they'll just come out and I just keep going and I mm-hmm. move past it. So clients don't really ever see it because I know that if I stay on it, it's embarrassing or like they'll catch it. So I just kind of keep going. But the other day I stuttered like five times and I kept saying the word pushy. I was trying to uh. say puss. Oh, homo said it. I don't want to say it. So I, and then that word came out and I was like, no, no. <laughs> and the kid just looks at me and I look at them. And I'm like, and then I try to say pushy again. And then the same bad word comes out. I'm like, no. Then you try doing like the sign for it. And then you just like this. And you're like, <laughs> no. No. it was terrible it was one of the most embarrassing moments thank god i've known the kid for like three years and they're like you're a fucking idiot and i was like yeah. don't look at me <laughs> i know how dumb you are <laughs> don't look at me in my shame i felt like a naked schmeagle in that moment <laughs> yeah my pussy <laughs> <pussy. laughs> Like there's a sack of potatoes. All right, let's get into the last two scenes. Uh, fourth one, autism. <laughs> That's all you gotta say. Autism. That's autism. all I really need to explain it. Dude. Autism. You're at a bowling alley, and <laughs> it just goes into a rant about Saint Nick and how his outfit <laughs> was wrong. And of course, these townspeople just like, fuck, bro. <laughs> I didn't need this. I didn't need this. I didn't ask I didn't for this. Need. And they were looked like they were about to whoop his ass. Yeah. <laughs> like, what you doing here, boy? Huh? No, we don't use no word over here. No, uh. <laughs> no, uh. Oh, Even no, though no. they're in like Boston or some shit. Shit. They're Boston. in New England. Boston so. races is shit. What? No. Spence. I... For th- for those of you that are listening on the podcast side, I want you to go back and watch that scene. I actually want you, all of you go and watch all the scenes. <laughs> Just rewatch them. Yeah, watch the scenes. Let us get the views yeah. on YouTube. We need the views. Yeah, don't be an asshole. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to shout out to the hundred of you that watch the podcast no matter what, faithfully. I much appreciated, much love. Um so that stare is the stare when someone's just dialoguing and they're and the other person's timed out and like, what the fuck is this kid talking about? If y'all let a neural spicy ever get that stare, please shut up. <laughs> please shut up. I've definitely given that stare. I'm just like, Spence does it to me on the podcast all the time. I'm like, that boy drooling. <laughs> Whenever Spence gives me the Egger from Men in Black look, I'm like, he's dead. Egger from Men in Black? Yeah. Egger? More, the fuck is that? more sugar water. Oh, oh. There you go. Yeah. More water. Sugar water. Yeah, I'm talking about ass enchiladas. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, I just called Spencer Edgar from Red and Black. Yeah, you just called me a alien in a man's clothes. A man's cockroach. Skin. A cockroach. Yeah, you literally called me a, a space cockroach <laughs> in um in a person's skin. You also gay. Well, 
uh, um, slay. Uh, be funny, funny scene, dude, bro. It is. How many times have you gotten that that look when you're just on your when you're on your stick? Oh, when I'm fucking talking about like Star Wars or Marvel, and I'm just going into like the intricacies of uh, different characters. Definitely through Dom, she's definitely giving me a look like, <laughs> okay, yeah. all right, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. You giving her the history of a saber? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, you know what? They actually grab their own crystals and it's actually like this whole trial. So they have to, you know, they get it's their crystals that choose them. Not the you know, they don't choose the crystals. Crystals choose them. And it's just <laughs> <laughs> student told me the other day. She said, My last boyfriend loves Star Wars. She's like, I'm glad I dumped his ass. I was like, Jesus. Oh, geez. She's, I said, why? Because he would just talk about the most random shit that I didn't give a fuck about. I'm like, he was probably the nicest boy. And let's be honest, she was probably also saying some shit that he didn't give a fuck about, but he acted like he did. 100%. We all do. We all have this. We oh, all yeah. have it to where it's like we all talk about shit that we're just like, I don't give a fuck, but hey, I love you, so I will give a fuck. I love you, so I'm going to listen to you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give it, I'm not going to look at you. I can't repeat what you just said, but but I like it. I was here. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I was there. What did uh, Marshawn Lynn said? I'm just here so I don't get fined. There you go. <laughs> That's your relationships in a nutshell. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Let's be real. <laughs> that is definitely Colin's relationship. Uh, <laughs> I'm just here. I, he doesn't hear. He doesn't hear <laughs> shit that she says, bro. <laughs> I like, bro. Do you even pay attention to her? He's like, I haven't paid attention in like three years. That seems like a lovely relationship. Not gonna get into it. All right. Yeah. So. Thank God she doesn't watch the show. Um, well, <laughs> one. This is gonna be the one episode she watches. I know. I've yeah. Literally been planning the divorce. I love for- this movie. Oh. Uh- oh. <laughs> uh, FYI, we've been planning the divorce for like a couple months now. So. Um, Once, motherfucker, the first. <laughs> as soon as you said "I do," you're like, Gee, "I remember on the trip when the, the car almost rolled backwards on her, and he was like fuck almost." Yeah, <laughs> almost had it. I know. I looked. Almost had it. I looked at him. I said, "We almost got married, didn't we?" <laughs> this is about to be a fucking Netflix special with you. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> The dark love. It was awesome going into the store. This is my baby. And I'm like, don't it look just like me? Little blonde hair, blue eyed, white baby. Yeah. Most Nazi baby you've ever seen. I know. Um, <laughs> hilarious. See, right here. A bunch of you probably tuned out because me and Spencer are just talking. Straight autism moment. Welcome. To- <laughs> you have a water. <laughs> so this is a great example of how folks on the spectrum can just go on a tangent. And right. sometimes you need to reel it in. I love his brain. I love how it works. I love the details, the history. 